Thursday, Community Matters. I'm Jay Fidel here on Think Tech. We have uh, my old friend, Hema, <laughs> Hema Cubero del Barrio. Did yes. I say that right? Yeah, wonderful. Hi, Hema. So nice to see you. <laughs> you have some practice now, huh? <laughs> and we have your friend and collaborator, Florence Johnny Frisbee. Hi, Florence Johnny. Let's call Hi. you Johnny. Oh, good. Yeah, well, that's my name. Okay, but yeah. that's not your full name. What is your full name? Uh, Florence Natokorua Johnny Frisbee. Natokorua is, um, is my mother's name, and it means in memory of two. Uh, uh. So tell us a little about yourself, Johnny. You, you were... You were born and raised on Puka Puka, the island of Puka Puka? Uh, no, I was born in Tahiti. In Tahiti? And, um, yes, and um, arrived on Puka Puka when I was a year and a half, two years, and grew up there until I was 12. And then when my mother passed away, our father decided to uh, take us, to introduce us to other places in the world, atolls and big cities, you know. And, and you moved to an island that was very small, just yes, you and your yes, fam immediate yes. family. <clears throat> yes, uh, we moved. Um, well, actually, we boarded a boat, a schooner, uh, heading to the Kuka Rarotonga, and when um, and it stopped off at many other little islands, atolls. And when we arrived on Suvaru, this it um, it's very it, it's sort of uninhabited. There were two New Zealanders there who were coast watchers and to uh, Manihiki men to help them survive. Was so, uh, New Zealanders, they didn't know how to climb coconut trees, they didn't know how to scale fish, <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah. So my, we, uh, <clears throat> we, uh, um, we loved the, the, this island. It was just a lot of birds and coconut crab. Uh, lots of food you didn't have to worry life. about. Yes, and my father said, oh, we're going to stay here, you know. So we did. We got off the boat and um, built ourselves a hut, and, uh, <laughs> and we had a bush knife. And so was able to, you know, to survive with the bush knife to cut down and um, crack coconuts, and um, mm -hmm. it was a wonderful life. But you you left there after a while. Where did uh, you go? Well, after we were there when the 1942 hurricane. It was one of the worst ever to hit that part of the world. Um, uh, visited Suvaru, and it was horrendous. Yeah, and we only survived because our father tied us to a uh, 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 tamanu tree. Otherwise, you would have been swept away. Oh, yeah, because the waves, these big, huge waves were coming from the ocean and, and then also from the lagoon and would meet in the middle, you know, this boom crash. Yeah. I wonder how that island is doing now with oh, sea Oh, beautifully. Levels. Yes, I've been back there since. Yeah, beautiful. It's grown. It, it was a, a desert after, after the hurricane, yes. So you feel the same way about these places today? Uh, which places? Those places? The places you grew up in. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, I'm emotionally tied to those places. Yeah. And, so, my, and uh, it has lots of memories with being with the family. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you guys collaborated on the movie we're going to talk about, mm -hmm. Our yes. Atoll Speaks. And the atoll in question is uh, is not the small island; it's uh, Puka Puka. Yeah, Puka Puka. So yeah. it's a study of Puka Puka. We'll mm -hmm. talk about that. But mm -hmm. my question is, how did you collaborate? How did you collaborate? Ask Emma. So I <laughs> met Johnny like eight years ago uh, because I started a film titled Homecoming, and about the life of um, Johnny. The, the film is actually about the life of Johnny Frisbee. So she will go in depth into what she just. Told you, and also the life of Amelia Borowski, who is the daughter of a, an anthropologist, Robert Borowski, that was taken there when she was one year old. You're going to bring Amelia around one of these yeah, days. Yeah, but she has two young babies, and she just couldn't do yeah. it. Okay. But um, she was the reason why I, I ever heard about Puka Puka. And then uh, Amelia read um, Johnny Frisbee's book that she wrote when she was 15. Well, 12, 13, 14. It was published when you were 15, Johnny? Yeah. <clears throat> I was 15. Okay, so it's titled Miss Ulysses from Puka Puka. And Amelia had a lot of memories about Puka Puka because she lived there the first five years of her life. But when she read Johnny Frisbee, I was living with her. And she said, oh my God, this place that was in my memories and imagination is real. I need to get back. So Johnny was a catalyst for her to go back. And I didn't think I was going to make this film. 
But then once um, I got to know more about the place and I met Johnny, I realized we could embark on a film and, and go back to the uh, Johnny, you had not been there in many decades, right? Mm. 30 years or so? Yeah. Since 94? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it, that is a, it's all an adventure, you know. Um, we've been working on that. So um, in 2017, uh, I knew, in 2015, we went to Puka Puka mm -hmm. and we filmed. And then in 2017, I knew that I needed to go back and get more footage. And we got a, a small grant from the United Nations in the Cook Islands that would allow me to go back and film. And they wanted me to do something around climate change. And that's how this film emerged. It was never, it was never going to happen, but it happened because uh, of these other films. So it's like two films uh, going on at the same time. Life is like that, isn't it? It is surprising. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing <laughs> the way things work. I mean, mm. You know, you go from Puka Puka to an island the size of a ball field. <laughs> you don't get swept away in, 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 in the great storm of 1942. There were other storms, too, going on in the world. You didn't get swept away by that either. Um, and then years later, a lifetime later, you meet Hema. Mm, Hema and we're sitting here. Of, yeah, and here we are. It's that simple. Hema, the product of, of Spain, who goes... You know, Johnny Priestley told me recently, Hema, check your genealogy. Because maybe there were some... The Spaniards actually passed through Puka Puka before the British. So I'm going to check my genealogy. Okay. I would have never been able to go to Puka Puka if it wasn't because I met Amelia and then I met Johnny. And it's a place, Puka Puka is a place that is outside of the tourist uh, circle. So you can only go there if you have somebody that they really trust. And mm -hmm. it's really changed my life in many ways. And mm -hmm. this film, what I want to emphasize is that it's, we really did it with the entire island. So I've interviewed so many people that what we did when I came back is we looked at the transcripts of all those interviews and selected the words that were about climate change and conservation. And then we got together with Amelia and Johnny. She's an amazing writer. And we shaped the, the, the narrative to be like a, a poem, like a film poem. And everybody added their magic. And then we decided that Johnny, who is the Puka Puka, is a Puka Puka the only Puka Puka woman <laughs> living in Hawaii, <laughs> or, um, I thought, like, well, there's this beautiful voice. Let's have her do the narration, which is, to me, is the voice of the people. You're the, Puka voice, Puka. The, the voice of the film, of, yeah. of the people. Yeah. And you're a poet, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's, let's look at some pictures, okay? Okay. And then we'll come back and, and, and drill down. Okay. So the first thing is we'll take the trailer. Let's see the trailer of uh, the, the atolls, our atoll speaks. We are the children of the Ulu of the Watu of Puka Puka. How long can we call Puka Puka the island home? Climate change is the biggest threat to our existence. Our atoll speaks. So beautiful. Yeah, it is. Was it hard to find that beauty? Did you have to search around for those shots? No, it's everywhere. <laughs> I mean, the sharks are pretty harmless there in the yeah. lagoon. The yeah. sharks. We swim. We used to they say, what do you say, sharks? 
Yeah, we used to swim with them as kids. Oh, the, oh, the sharks? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, I thought, I thought oh, that's I'm what talking about the movie shots. But the oh, the shots. shots. Oh, shots. Uh, okay. We have it's, shots of sharks. <laughs> you know, Puka Puka is so beautiful. The beauty is everywhere, you know? Yeah. I mean, the beauty of cinema is how you put it together, how you edit it, yeah. how, what music yeah. you choose, how the pace and the tone. Mm. But the beauty is just, you know, it's everywhere. It really is. You think uh, the title, you know, looking at it now, after you've uh, premiered at the Hawaii International Film Festival, um, you think the title Our Atoll Speaks is a good title? You know, what, why did you pick that? And what, what I mean, what, why did you pick that particular title? Is, is it a correct title now? I really think it is. Actually, that title emerged from our sharing, right? Mm -hmm. I think it wasn't it you that said Our Atoll Speaks. The essence of the piece for us is that the island is the protagonist and we're not used to the word atoll, but it's a reality, you know? And um, the atoll is like what the film is uh, doing is asking people to listen, you know? And we don't have to go too far, it's just listen to the surroundings, listen to nature, learn from your environment. It was really important for us um, to add the Puka Puka language. So that's what then we added mm -hmm. in the translation. Can, can you say hello to me in Puka Pukan? I knew you'd say that. <laughs> so Puka Puka, you know, is... It's what, actually, Kopewe uh, Okore is how are you? It's no hello as such. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> but what's unique about Puka Puka too, so many things is un are unique about Puka Puka. And the languages, they have their own language. They're part of the Cook Islands. But they have their own language. So, Remarkable, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that was a statement yeah. also to put the language there and to at, at least a little bit so you can hear it and you can hear the beauty of the language. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the story of the making of the film is, is really interesting. Uh, I mean, you sort of flowed into it. Your life flowed into it and your mm -hmm. lives flowed into it mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And here we are with this um, marvelous film of a place that is, um, you know, uh, under attack by, by climate and, and modern society also, you know. And, uh, you know, I think I wanted to ask, oh, the, the, we, we spoke about this before, but I didn't catch it. The nuances, um, the atoll speaks, but in order to know what it speaks, mm -hmm. you've got to listen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a frame of mind. You have to have a frame of mind mm -hmm. to hear what it speaks. Mm -hmm. So what is it saying? What, what did you intend it to say? Let's talk to, you know, the, the voice here. Well, um, I think of it this way. The film shows the people mm. uh, doing different things, many, many different things. And much of it is very unique because Puka Puka is isolated. It's one of 15 islands in the Cook Islands. Mm -hmm. And it's um, very unique because it's so far away from all the other islands. So the language survived, um, you know, the culture, the chanting, the, the way they catch fish and cook fish, are quite different. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, Atoll Speaks um, does um, represents all of these u the things that are very unique. To the it's a microcosm people. of humanity, isn't it? It is. If you strip away... Yes. A lot of the, the mm -hmm. trouble and the, you know, the complications of uh, mm -hmm. the Western and Eastern world, mm -hmm. you get right down to basics, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. who are we as a species, mm -hmm. how do we do right. when faced directly mm -hmm. with nature? Yeah. A kind nature, yeah. but nevertheless mm -hmm. nature. Yeah, yeah and um, I think one, one of uh, the reasons that I'm so proud of that our um, island councillors have decided upon a decision that I uh, know um, other people from uh, Western countries could come and live there. Yeah. They can visit but not live there. Mm -hmm. And that has helped greatly, you know, um, for the Puka Puka to retain the custom and uh, be themselves. Yeah. Because it does. Uh, what people from other countries, especially Western countries, do um, demand a certain yeah, uh, certain you don't want to be overrun and, either. <laughs> no, they won't yes, be and, overrun. Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have wonderful school. Our, our students, you know, learn 
lessons that would enable them to live in New Zealand, attend universities, you know, but it's taught uh, in a way that um, uh, fits their, who they are. You know, that, that it strikes me, Hema, that you lived there. I did. You completely embedded yourself there. Yeah, the first time we went, uh, we, was, we were there for like... Uh, seven months. No, no, like for seven weeks the first time. Oh, seven and then, weeks. Yeah. And then uh, the second trip, uh, it was closer to six, six months. Mm. And when I, the first time that I went, um, I got a taste of it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> my God. It was like, I was making this film about these two women that were super powerful. But then the but place, better than cheesecake. It's so different. So you made a movie about cheesecake before, you know that. You it's know? It is Puka Puka exactly. is incredible. So I was like overtaken by everything. And then I realized I cannot do justice to this film if I don't really, if I'm not really there. What did you want to say? What did you want the Atoll to speak to us? To say that uh, we, Puka Puka people, have it's an incredible society that is run outside of the capitalist system that is um, highly structured, and they have a lot of wisdom about how they use, how they are respecting the ocean and the sea and, and the land, and how they use their resources. And my feeling was like, they have so much to show us that we could actually benefit from. Now, Puka Puka is its own universe, right? And the people watching might be living in Chicago, in Shanghai, in Honolulu, in a very completely different environment. But what we wanted to do is like give an option that life can be different, that you can live a different kind of life. And if you cannot be in Puka Puka, you can learn something from them. We want to do a, an impact education campaign and take the film to communities, and not just indigenous communities, but communities and, and schools. And we are going to design a conservation pledge, meaning that when you watch the film, hopefully you're overtaken by its beauty and its power. And then you can look at your environment and say, like, what can I do? Yeah. So it's a very small place in the world, but it's, it's, there's nothing small about it. No, oh, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> well, it's, it's the microcosm of mm. humanity is what it is. Mm. It's just, it's a laboratory, a study, <clears throat> yeah, an, definitely. an exquisite experiment. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, a lifelong experiment, more than that, a, a millennia-long mm -hmm. experiment. Yeah. When I went there, I knew that Johnny and Amelia had been, the only thing I knew about Puka Puka is that their life had been completely marked by this place. When I got there and then I lived there, I was like, this is the main character. Mm -hmm. It's like, these women are who they are because of Another experience is to, you Did know. you were able to convey all of that in, in the film? Uh, so I'm talking about two films. So no, uh, our Atoll Speaks is more about uh, conservation and climate change. Of and course, which what is Johnny very said. timely now. And okay. also what Johnny said, you just see them doing things. It's not like, oh, it's just, they're very <laughs> pragmatic. It's like, you have to survive. But how they do it. So it strikes that's me Atoll that, speaks. you know, this civilization you're talking about, this culture, different than other cultures mm -hmm. in the Pacific it is. Islands. Yes, yeah. it is. How? Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, how can I answer that? Um, well, they're just so unaffected, you know, very little. They are very little unaffected because they're, um, they're so far away from all the other islands. So they're almost, almost as natural as you can Imagine in their kindness, their humor, uh, the fact they're not concerned about laughing out loud anywhere, whoever is around, eating with their fingers and enjoying the fishbone, uh, um, you know, and just taking care of children and um, older, the old people. Well, when I grew up there, they would all in, in the um, before sunset, they would all gather on the beach, take their clothes <coughs> off, and they walk slowly into the lagoon and just swim up to their neck and talk and catch up. This is better and than Michener. 
Uh, oh, well, my. Mitch, I knew Mitch in a very oh, well. Oh, did you? Yes, oh, he's, my written, he's written about our family in his book. Oh, my goodness. He was yeah, your mentor. So, yeah, yeah, he was my mentor. He yeah. helped bring me to Hawaii yeah. in 1950. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. My you... father had written lots and lots and lots and lots of books. And one of them is the book of Puka Puka. And he also wrote for the Atlantic Monthly all about Puka Puka, series of... Um, he was uh, also so, in love with Puka Puka. Huh? Yes, he oh, was yeah. in love with my mother. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> So, we, we have to have another show with you. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> That's really tantalizing. <laughs> so let's talk about um, you know your success in this movie. Uh, how long is it? Uh, what, what is what does it look like? Sort of in a start to finish. What am I going to see in this movie? So you're going to learn about, of course, Puka Puka, about their origins, about their myth of Mata Aliki. You're going to learn about how is a communal society and how they're run and what they do. Um, you're going to see tremendous beauty <laughs> and how the wisdom and the knowledge is passed from generations to generations. And then at the end, it was very intentional to um, invite everybody to really uh, care about climate change and. Um, so, you know, it's like there's a, a cry for, you know, like a, a call to really listen and respect nature. Um, it's a 14-minute film, uh, but the intention is that How you many go minutes? 14 minutes. 14 minutes. And then what, I, what we did is I included everybody that was part of the film, but also all the 40, 450 people that live in the atoll. So that was very intentional, that not only Johnny would be the communal voice of the people, but that people would be able to see their names mm -hmm. in the credits. So it's really a communal, that's what I'm so proud of it. And it's also, you know, people, critics are talking about it like it's a meditation, which makes me really happy, because you don't have any control of how people are going to take the film. But I think it's not a film about creating fear. It's a film about, like, enticing you to see something really pristine and beautiful. And, Maybe you can apply a few things, you know, into your life. Yeah. yeah. Introspective. What a, what a fabulous topic. So, okay, so now you want this film to get into the Hawaii International Film Festival. You want to share this Definitely. with the world. You want to share Puka Puka with the world. Definitely. You want to share that sense of community caring mm -hmm. with the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so how does that work? What's the experience like to get a movie into the Hawaii International Film Festival. Well, um, I love the Hawaii International Film Festival. Uh, before we came here, intentionally, we showed the film in Puka Puka, and we went to New Zealand because New Zealand and Puka Puka are really connected. Yeah. Every Puka Puka has a New Zealand passport. So, um, and coming to Hawaii, I mean, Hawaii is our home. Uh, Johnny lives here, Amelia lives here. I also consider Hawaii my home. It's a Polynesian culture. Uh, so it was very intentional to premiere here so people will understand, will have some kind of connection, you know. And it was fabulous. I love the festival, you know. Um, we, we had two screenings and it was selected. sold out. You have to be selected. Yeah, definitely. Why, yeah. why do you oh. think they selected the atoll? Our atoll speaks for the festival. Well, I mean, um, we have a, I have a really good relationship with them, but um, it's the merit of the film. Yeah. What was your earlier film, the Cheesecake film? Was yeah, that the Automatic Cake too? premiere there. Yeah. And I just love their taste. You know, there is a festival that cares deeply about the Pacific, about new ways of storytelling. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was very intentional. And then, uh, you know, they put us in the Pacifica showcase, not in the Made in Hawaii, because this is a, uh, it's a film about Puka Puka, you know. And we had a sold out, uh, two sold out screenings. Something funny happened on the first one. There was like a, an evacuation alarm, like somehow. It, it was funny. I'm going to tell the story because it's really funny. We're watching the film. Everybody's super hooked. And then he's like, please, please, leave, evacuate, evacuate. People were not moving. I think they were so hooked to the movie. The third time, then some people started to leave, and then they said right away, it's false. It's a false evacuation. So everybody came back and sat. But people were really hooked. What I will always remember is that, wow, you know, they were really So why, why did people come in? You filled the house yeah. in the uh, HIFF. You sold out. Yeah. yeah. Why, why do people come? Was, there, was it a matter of how you promoted it? 
Or was it a matter of people, you know, being touched by uh, a need to meet people from Puka Puka, meet people like Johnny, uh, to engage and find out what makes you tick? So, <laughs> my God. Thank you. Nice. So, this is a short film. You know, Automatic yeah. Cake was a feature length. So, the film was curated uh, within uh, five other really great uh, Pacifica films. We showed the third. It was the third uh, in the collection. So, of course, we promote it to all our friends. But also, I give a lot of credit to the festival because they have a, a big tradition. I mean, Jeanette Paulson Haranico created this festival like 40 years ago. And there is a, people appreciate stories about the Pacific. So, I think we were in a really good selection. And also, we sold out because they read about it. And of course, climate change. But it's also, I think, there is a long history of people really caring deeply about the Pacific, and not all the festivals care. Interesting. Mm. We have some photos. We should, we should talk yeah. about the photos. Yeah. Why don't we show the photos? Let's see what photos are. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. What do you got? The poster. So, yeah. <clears throat> the poster shows on, yeah. There mm -hmm. you go, Johnny. Mm. There you go. That is Johnny's uh, family, Ropati, and... Mm -hmm. Homea, that's Jeanette who founded the festival, the programmer Anna Page, amazing woman, the crowd. The crowd for, the, for your film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a crowd. It was really, really. Cool. And then mm -hmm. we did a radio interview at UH Manoa. Mm -hmm. so, and that is Amelia, the other character, the, she was key to this film with the two daughters. And so mm -hmm. here we are. <laughs> so this is a, a precious jewel, isn't it? You've created a precious jewel. Mm -hmm. I would say, just gauging it from our discussions, mm -hmm. this is the best thing you've ever done yeah, mm -hmm. in terms of film. Am I right? This is closer it's, to every, the center every film of your... It's so different. I'm, yeah. I'm really happy with it. You know, yeah. the thing with me is that I work on films until forever. And mm -hmm. people are like, when are you going to be done? <laughs> but yeah. then once I finish yeah. it, I don't... I, I'm very proud of, mm -hmm. of this one, about yeah. all of them. I mean, every film is a, yeah. a universe. Yeah. Yeah. And Johnny, where does this fit in your life? Um, what it fit in. Um, what does it mean to you? Um, it means greatly um, because um, Hema made this film and I, I, I trusted her. You know? and Trust she, is always good. Yeah, and she did it in a way, having come from a totally different background and in a way that actually represents the heart, the spirit of the people, the land. Mm. Yeah. And that's unique. I've she understood. Yes, I've been, I've been on lots of documentary makers. You know, yeah. But mm. she's quite unique in that. Yeah. Yeah, well, she, I agree with you. Yeah, she is unique. Yeah. She can yes. understand things yes. that yes. ordinary mortals yes. may not yes. be able yes. to understand. Yes, <laughs> yes. and I, I feel very comfortable, and I actually feel good being part of the of this. Uh, that's great. This that's important. So where does, where does the film go now? You know, you filled the house. You've achieved um, greatness in the Hawaii International Film Festival. Um, what happens now with the film, and what happens with you guys? Tell me now. So with this film, I have submitted it to a really big festival in Europe that I cannot say. It will be amazing if we get there, <laughs> because the, the, the intention with this film is to make it available to everybody. The intention of the film is not necessarily... Um, to make money with it, but to really fully make it available uh, in the school system. Does this mean and that Sunday it's going to play on ThinkTech Hawaii? Yes. Okay. Just want yeah. to check that out. Yeah. yeah. So uh, every film is different. Some, some films you have to make sure that they don't show anywhere because it's going to this television or Netflix or blah, blah, blah. This film is like we want to take it everywhere. But I do want to premiere in a major festival in Europe and in the, in the mainland and take it to Australia because there are mm -hmm. most Puka Puka, a lot of Puka Pukas in the diaspora, live in Australia. Yeah, sure. And I wanna, we want to take the film to as many places, as small, any, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Schools. Yeah. 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 And, and I think because of the state of the world now and uh, so, you know, so many threats and strife and a lot of homeless people and all uh, throughout the world, um, this film would just make the heart, you know, would give, lend warmth to the heart and, and um, the imagination will go wild, and you think about be diff It'd be very good. It would be a very good medicine, and tonic. 
Yes. People that don't yeah. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes you can create change by creating fear. And I don't believe in that so much anymore. I think you can create change by really mm -hmm. um, creating beauty. Mm -hmm. And making somebody feel so inspired that I, you have mm -hmm. to revisit all your life. Make them treasure the beauty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are beautiful. You're, you oh. have grace, the two of you. I'm so glad to meet you, Johnny. And Emma, it's always wow. nice to spend I, a few minutes with you. I love coming here. Yeah. And she's amazing. You could do like four shows on her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We could start with Michner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Emma Cubero del Barrio. Uh, and Florence Johnny Frisbee, I'm not going to repeat the whole name. <laughs> Thank you very much, you guys, Thank for coming you. down. It's so a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Very nice. Thank you.